In this video, I'm going to talk about three different M.2 NVMe SSDs from Lexar, the NM620, the NM710, and the NM790, which a lot of you have requested before. And none of these drives are brand new, and they have been out for some time now, but they're also some of the most affordable SSDs on the market. So I thought it would be very interesting to see what they offer, how they perform, and how they compare to a bunch of other drives I've tested so far. And most importantly, uh, if they are worth getting or not. So without further ado, let's check them out. The NM790 is a very interesting drive because it is available in capacities of up to 4 terabytes. It is one of the cheapest Gen 4 4 terabyte SSDs that you can currently get, and it is a single-sided drive which definitely helps when it comes to compatibility with certain laptops. It is built a bit differently than most other drives because it uses a lesser-known Maxiotech controller uh, combined with a 232-layer TLC NAND from a YMTC. It is a DRAM-less drive that uses a 32 megabyte host memory buffer for caching instead. And if we look at the specs, you can see that it comes with a five-year-long warranty and a higher than average total bytes written rating of 1500 terabytes for the two terabyte version, but that's about it. They don't really specify which parts they're using nor what performance to expect uh, other than some very standard sequential numbers. So in theory, they kind of keep the option open to change the actual parts if they ever wanted to, which is unfortunately not an uncommon practice. So I would really like to see more detailed specs uh, than the ones they're showing on their website currently. The NM710 is available in capacities of up to two terabytes. Uh, it is also single-sided and it uses the same controller as the NM790, but a slightly more basic 128 layer TLC memory. It doesn't have DRAM cache either. It comes with a five year long warranty and a total bytes written rating of 1200 terabytes for the two terabyte model that I have right here. But the same criticism applies to this drive as well. So you don't get any information about the part Parts, uh, nor performance, so it leaves the drives open to change, which we can already see in the NM620 here. So the NM620 is a slightly older Gen 3 NVMe SSD, and there are multiple versions of this drive. So I have the model with a Maxio controller and NAND from LongSys, but other reviewers have reported NM620 drives with a Maxio controller and Micron NAND, or an InnoGrid controller and Micron NAND. Now, technically, this version that I have here is what most people should find in stock at the moment, and it should be the faster combination according to Lexar, but I really prefer when brands just change the product name when they change the hardware, so it's always kind of clear what you're getting. For this drive, Lexar did make some slightly more clear performance claims, uh, including IOPS numbers, uh, but it also means that any combination of hardware that can hit uh, those numbers could actually be sold under the same name, which again, isn't ideal either. Now they do specify it will use TLC NAND, it has a five year long warranty and a reasonable total bytes written rating. But let's see how these drives perform. And as usual, I'm going to start with the PC Mark 10 Quick Benchmark, which is a nice bundle of tests that simulate a lot of very simple things that we do with our PCs on a daily basis like uh, working with various documents, for example, uh, like looking at your family photos or vacation photos, like loading your games and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark to look at uh, if you are looking for a secondary drive or maybe an extra drive for those simple little things. And the NM620 was not doing that well and the NM710 doesn't look that great either. But the NM790 sits nicely in the middle of the graph. It is a bit faster than the Crucial P3 Plus that it also competes with in terms of price. And it sits nicely next to the Samsung 980 Pro. But some other DRAM-less drives like the SN770 or the SN580 just show that uh, host memory buffer based drives can do really well in these lighter workloads, uh, most likely because of their larger HMB buffers and faster parts. The full PC Mark 10 suite is a benchmark that simulates a bit more serious, a bit more intense and a bit more uh, constant use of the drive. And this is a great test to look at if you're looking for a main drive or you need to run some applications that can be uh, very heavy on your SSD, like editing videos, for example. 
And here, the Maxio controllers started doing a little bit better. The NM620 is still on the lower end of the graph, but the NM710 outperforms the P3 Plus and it is now next to mid-range drives like the 980 Pro from Samsung or Transcend 250, while the NM790 approaches the faster Gen 4 SSDs on the market. It ended up right next to the SN580 and the SN770. It was competing nicely with drives like the Fury Renegade and the SN850X as well. But the 990 EVO and Pro, the P41 and the Crucial T500 were still quite a bit ahead. So pricing will remain uh, very important for this drive. Now the consistency test is not that relevant for a lot of you because uh, it simulates a very extreme and very long uh, multi-hour workload that most of you will probably uh, never ever do. And if you end up doing, you will probably never get a drive like this one. But it is still very good to see how a drive holds up when you uh, really, really stress it for a very long time. And DRM-less drives typically really struggle here, so seeing them drop down in the graph is not really surprising at all. Still, the 710 holds up nicely next to the P3+, Plus, SN580, and the SN770, and the NM790 held up better than I expected it to, uh, landing not that far from some mid-tier SSDs that do have DRAM cache. So, I wouldn't really recommend any of these drives for really intense workloads, but it is very nice to see that the NM790 uh, will not completely tank if you ever do need to push it a little bit harder. Now, the 3D Mark Storage Benchmark is another bundle of tests that simulate a lot of gaming related tasks uh, this time around. So, those are the things like loading games, uh, installing your games, uh, moving your game folders around, uh, recording your gameplay, and so on. And this is obviously a very good test to look at uh, if you need an SSD that you're mainly going to use for gaming. And here, the NM620 doesn't look that great, yet again, but the NM710 holds up better and the NM790 did pretty okay, ending up next to drives like the 990 Pro, for example. The SN580 and the SN770 are slightly ahead, but not by much. And if we just look at the gaming results that I personally find uh, most important, uh, which is uh, loading times and installation and updating times, uh, with the fastest Gen 4 SSD I've tested so far as the 100% uh, baseline, which is the Crucial T500, the NM620 ended up at a disappointing 46%, the NM710 at just under 70%, and the NM790 ended up in a nice spot at around 80%. As I always say, sequential read and write performance numbers uh, don't really represent a real uh, life use as well as uh, previous benchmarks do, but it can still be a useful metric for some people. And in sequential writes, the 620 performs as you would expect from a cheaper Gen 3 drive. The 710 is okay for a cheapish Gen 4 drive, and the 790 sits close enough to the Gen 4 limit for me to say it's fine. And in sequential reads, it is pretty much the same story. Now, this does mean that both the NM710 and the NM790 are technically above the Sony's recommended spec for PlayStation 5 use, but since the PS5s cannot do HMB, I would personally consider getting a different uh, DRAM-based drive instead, even though Alexa does mention PlayStation 5 use in their marketing material. Now, thermals can be an issue for some high-end Gen 4 SSDs, but these controllers seem to be pretty efficient. In a stress test, the NM790, without any heat sinks or any airflow, had its sensors showing around 75 to 80 degrees Celsius with a surface temperature that is in line with that. So, unless you really stress your drive a lot, uh, your motherboard heat sink or even just a tiny bit of airflow around the SSD uh, should be plenty for this drive. So looking at all the data above, I would just avoid the NM620 in most cases. I mean, if it's extremely cheap in some budget bin somewhere and you just need something very, very basic, you can go for it, uh, but its performance is pretty disappointing. And if I look at the prices here in the Netherlands, uh, spending just five euros more can get you a faster Gen 4 SSD. And if you spend another five euros on top of that, you can get something even better. 
The NM710 is definitely a bit more interesting, but the competition is pretty tough in this uh, lower end segment. The SN580, for example, is generally significantly faster, uh, especially for lighter use, which is what budget drives like these are usually used for. But it is a decent performer, and if the price is right, it is at least worth keeping an eye on. Now, the NM790 is definitely the most interesting drive of the three. It performs well overall, and it doesn't struggle with heat, but it does need to be priced right yet again, which might be a challenge with smaller capacities because if we look at the local shops uh, here in the Netherlands, I don't think I would go for Lexar for 125 euros while the SN580 is 150. But the NM790 has a big advantage when it comes to 4 terabyte SSDs. So many drives don't have a 4 terabyte capacity at all. And if we look at 4 terabyte pricing, the NM790 is currently actually among the cheapest options available. I cannot get and cannot find any 4 terabyte Gen 4 SSDs for less. And the only options that cost the same are QLC drives that generally perform worse. Now, the first real upgrade is closer to 300 euros, which isn't worth it unless you actually do some heavy work with your drive. So for lighter use uh, with these prices, the NM790 is actually a fantastic option. So just like I say in every SSD video I've done so far, uh, prices do change all the time and you really need to keep an eye on the prices and deals in your region to see which drive uh, makes the most sense to get. And while I think that you can forget about the NM620 right here, I would keep an eye on the NM710 if you find it cheap, and definitely the NM790 if you're looking for larger capacities. Now, that is all I have for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new micro ATX case, the 2500X. It is a stunning, well-built dual chamber case that can fit pretty much any high power system you have in mind, while offering great performance and lots of glass panels so you can see your hardware and all your RGB properly. And if you want to spice things up a bit, you can get a mesh front panel instead, or different wooden panels that change the look of the case completely and offer something a bit more special. Check it out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you liked it and I hope that it was interesting and helpful enough or at least a bit. If you did and you want to see more videos about storage, please do consider clicking that subscribe button because I am preparing a few a very interesting roundups that should go live soon. Uh, but until then, bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!